Hey good humans, it's Jason and Jada, the director of this video. We just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Janu. They're the ones that provided the awesome scrubs that our doctors are wearing, and the ones that we currently have on right now. Honestly, my parents always wanted me to be a doctor growing up. That never really happened, but had I known that you could wear comfortable scrubs like this every day, I would honestly reconsider. Be sure to stick around to see how you can get your first pair of Janu scrubs. But until then, enjoy the video. When you guys were on call, what was your least favorite thing to be woken up by? I got a little bit uh, annoyed with uh, the Tylenol call, but you know, I had to do what I had to do, so. I did have to see a patient for like herpes <gasps> in his eye, so that wasn't very pleasant. I, I am a doctor. doctor. Five are posers. One is the real deal. In a room full of liars, can these teens find the real deal? So, how are we feeling? Oh, we're feeling good, we're feeling good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe a little more confident than I should be mm -hmm. now that I get a look at you. Mm -hmm. They ain't ready, they ain't ready. Okay, numbers one through six in that order. Could you tell us your specialties and what school you went to? I'm a dermatologist and I went to UCI. I'm a urologist and I went to University of Tennessee. I'm an emergency doctor and I went to UCF as well. Physical therapist, Rutgers University. I'm a pediatrician and I went to Drexel University. I'm an optometrist and I went to Southern California College of Optometry. Okay. Number six, can you tell me what 2020 vision means? Yeah, so basically it's kind of complicated. There's a lot of like physics to it, but there's a certain angle that's subtended by the letters that are on the Snellen chart that you're looking at. And so they standardize that at 20 feet distance. So if you're 20, 20, you're seeing what someone should be seeing at 20 feet. But if you're 20, 30, what someone can see at 30 feet, you need to be standing at 20 feet in order to see. When you guys were on call, what was your least favorite thing to be woken up by? During my residency, um, I actually had a case of Stephen Johnson's and that was very scary to see. Uh, a large accident uh, uh, with fatalities is always uh, a grim scene to come in, uh, into, especially if children are involved. So that's the, the worst thing that I've ever had to do. I got a little bit uh, annoyed with uh, the Tylenol call, but you know, I had to do what I had to do, so. <laughs> my emergencies are mainly uh, during like a practice or a real game. I've had ankle injuries that needed to be like lowered inflammation and put ice packs or certain, you know, massage therapy. I think just seeing any babies in pain and then seeing like a tragic loss is the hardest thing. I haven't been on call as much, honestly, but I did have to see a patient for like herpes <gasps> in his eye, so that wasn't very pleasant. I think you'd be thinking, I think what I'm thinking. thinking what I'm thinking. Oh, I'm thinking what you're thinking. Okay. okay. We're ready to make an elimination. Each team will try to find the real deal by eliminating the imposters. If both teams eliminate the same person, they will be removed from the game. When you ask about why they don't like being called at night, you know, it's so sad and the children and this like general thing, I was like, okay, it's, that's nice, but <laughs> How long have you been practicing since, well, you're still in residency, so since out of residency? I have been out of residency for a little over a year. I graduated in 1993 and went right into work, so... <laughs> 28. 28. 28. I graduated medical school at 2021. I've been uh, practicing for 15 years. I finished my residency at USC Medical Center five years ago. And I've been out of school for one year. Doctor number one, I have a question. For the medical terminology, intra versus inter, since you're a dermatologist, what's the difference? Yeah, so um, it has been a while since I've been in medical terminology, but I definitely use inter a lot, and that would be inside. And then intra, gosh, I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head. Doctor number four, can you name me the different kinds of cruciate ligaments? Three, you said three? However many there are. Oh, we got the in anterior, interior, I uh, have a meniscus. Those are the main for knee. Gotcha. Doctor number three, what system is the lymph nodes a part of? The lymphatic system. Are we allowed to eliminate two? No, just one. Okay. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> As a reminder, if both teams eliminate the same person, that person will be removed from the game. When I asked him to name me the cruciate ligaments, and he answered with meniscus, which is not a cruciate ligament. As a physical therapist, you should probably know that. Doctor number five, could you tell me a common medication that you prescribe for one of your patients? 
Benovate, it's for babies that have phimosis before they get circumcised. We try that method first. An average is like 50 milligrams. Doctor number five, I had a question for you too. For a baby under 28 days, if they had a fever, how much Motrin would you give them? Ideally none. Ooh, she knows her stuff. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, doctor number six. If a patient had glaucoma, what kind of prescription would you give them? You could give them something called a Tanoprost, so it's an eye drop. You do that one at nighttime only, in whichever I had the glaucoma. And then what would be the abbreviation for nighttime only? QHS. <laughs> Our resident, number three, can you tell me what a normal blood pressure is and then kind of explain to me what those numbers mean? Uh, 120 over 80, and 120 is the systolic, so pretty much the amount of uh, blood that's in the chamber before it's uh, ejected, and then the bottom number is basically the resting um, volume. One and four, could you tell me what kind of cars you guys drive? <laughs> <laughs> I drive a Toyota Honda Highlander. So I have been driving the same car since I was 15. I drive a Honda CRV. I am still paying off medical school, so I will be driving that until it cannot be driven anymore. <laughs> I think we're ready to make another elimination. Mm -hmm. In this round, both teams have decided that one person is definitely not the real deal. Number four. We'll miss you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would love to hear your wackiest story from a patient on the job. Down the line, sorry, I'd love to hear from all of you. So we had a TikTok star in one time, and um, when I entered the room, he was standing on the medical bed, uh, filming something, pretending he was surfing. So that was definitely very interesting. It was um, a vaginal occlusion. Uh, she and her friend had been playing around with a bottle and created a vacuum, therefore lodging the, uh, the bottle in her vagina. I had this uh, elderly patient. She had some sundowning, some form of dementia, but she kept asking me to go to the bathroom with her to show her a good time. A mother asked me, is it okay to put uh, false eyelashes on her newborn baby for pictures? For me, I had a guy come in because he was playing with a Nerf gun, and then I guess he got hit in the eye, and then he ended up having like traumatic uveitis, and then he got some glaucoma as a result from that, so that was pretty crazy. Nerf or nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're good to eliminate. Doctor number two. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. So we eliminated number two next because there were very broad answers given. It wasn't very like specific to what a urologist actually does. So this is a question for doctors three and five. You walk into the room and you see the patient's monitor flatline. You feel their pulse, there's nothing there. How many jewels are you going to shock them with? Doctor number five. Five. And doctor number Three. 200. Doctor One. It has been a while since I've been in the ER. I am a dermatologist after all, but if I remember correctly, it's 150 joules. Okay, and Doctor Six. Yeah, so I definitely don't work in the emergency room, so I don't really work with that. I'm not sure. That's fair. <laughs> okay, okay. That was a question everyone got wrong. The answer is none because you don't shock asystole. But that's something medical TV sometimes gets wrong. Everybody comes in there with the paddles ready to go. I don't know. I don't know who's I don't know anything the real anymore. deal at this point. Okay, I have a question for doctor number three. So earlier I asked you what system the lymph nodes are a part of. You said the lymphatic system. What's the major system that it's a part of? I know that it, I know it recycles like dead, dead cells, um, fights off infections and whatnot. Um, I, I'm just like at the tip of my head. I'm just like nervous right now, so I can't. Doctor number really, one, really do you know what the it. answer is? I believe it's the circulatory system. Doctor number six, do you agree? The immune system. Sweet. Like, okay. Doctor number five, what is the average heartbeat of a newborn versus a one-year-old? For a newborn, um, it's lower, so maybe like 35 beats per minute. It elevates by the time they're one, obviously. So maybe like 40, 30, 45. Right. Okay, I'm ready to make an elimination. I'm ready to, yeah. Okay.
doctor number five. Thank you. Thank you. She talked about the heartbeat for a baby. Uh, that gave it away. She answered that a resting heart rate of a fetus or infant is 35, which it'd be very concerning if it was that. Um, yeah, they'd be not alive. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna have a demonstration. I was just gonna have uh, Dr. Number Six do a little eye exam with my pen light on Andre. Okay. And tell us what she's looking for. Let's see what Dr. Number Six got. She, is she a pro or not? See those skills mm -hmm. in action. Mm -hmm. All right, so first I'm gonna be checking to see if your pupils are equally responsive to light and if they are equal in terms of size. I'm gonna do the direct response first. So just look straight ahead for me, please. Cool, so when I shine it between the two eyes, I'm looking to see if the other one stays constricted because that means that there's like a good communication between like the brain. <laughs> so that's what I'm looking for. Okay, doctor number one. Can you uh, tell me what medication you typically prescribe to patients with cystic acne? Mm. Yes, so if the acne is bad enough, we're gonna put them on Accutane, but that is a high-risk drug, so we have to make sure that the women come in every month and give us a pregnancy test. And then I also recommend to not drink very much when you're on that medication, and that goes for men as well. Last thing, does a bar of soap clean the face pretty well? Uh, it can, yes. I have some patients that don't even use soap when they wash their face, and they have beautiful skin, so it kind of just depends on your physiology. Thank you. We're locking in the real deal. Mm -hmm. Doctor number six. What is that machine called that blows air into your eye? Yeah, so that's called an, uh, it's a non-contact tonometer. It uh, measures your eye pressure to screen for conditions like glaucoma. The cones that are in our eye, what do they do? So they help you perceive color. What colors do we see? Okay, sorry, I'm trying to think. <laughs> uh, red, green, and yellow. That's number three. <laughs> Talk me through intubating someone. What are you trying not to accidentally push it down instead? Uh, you're not trying to push out the tongue so that they don't like, or it doesn't block the airway. Okay. I'm gonna ask one more question okay. real quick to doctor number one. Yeah. Somebody has a mole, they wanna get it checked out. What are some things they should look out for? So changes in shape, color, if there's any pain, that's definitely something we wanna know. And then um, throughout the mole, if there is different kinds of colors and textures, that's something that we wanna look at as well. That is all I needed. One of you is a real doctor, the other, Five of you are going to jail for impersonating a doctor. <laughs> Those doctors look really nice, Jason. They really do. When Dr. Neela, co-founder of Janu, put on her first pair of scrubs, she felt deflated. The boxy, baggy fit really did not inspire her to perform at her best. And that's why she created Janu to help ensure that healthcare professionals everywhere achieve their greatness with comfortable scrubs that allow for peak performance. Their breathable antimicrobial fabrics are wrinkle-free, moisture-wicking, and allow you to be active and move with zero distractions. Johnny believes that better care has the power to provide a better world. So join them and reimagine your own greatness. That's right. And today, for 15% off your first pair of scrubs, you can visit johnny.com and use the code jubilee15 at checkout. Now enjoy the rest of the video. We think the real deal is doctor number one. Dermatologist. We think she was knowledgeable about everything that she explained. She didn't really know the jewels, but like she said, she's not in the ER very often. We think the real deal is doctor number one. She didn't fumble on any of her answers, and the more that she kind of got into it, the more I felt that like she was a doctor talking to me as a patient. In the event that both teams lock in the real deal, the team that locked in their guest first wins. If the lights on the floor turn green, that means that you have chosen the real deal. If they turn red, that means that you have chosen an imposter. The real deal will be revealed in three, oh my gosh. two, one. Oh, what the hell? Uh, who is it? Uh, 
Yes, hello teens, my name is Rebecca. I am not a doctor. I was in the medical field. My original plan was to be a PA, but then I left medicine, I went and got my MBA, and now I'm in marketing. I stopped working in healthcare four years ago, so it was a bit of a memory kind of situation. I was an MA for a dermatology and plastic surgery private office. Because you are not able to find the real deal, we will reveal them to you. Right there. I shouldn't have gone off the cones. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Nicole, and I'm the real doctor. I think sometimes maybe the way I speak can come off a little ditzy. I don't know if it's just my own persona of myself, but I feel like some people don't really look at me and assume that I could be a doctor. I think that uh, doctor number one did an amazing job. Like, I literally would go to her. <laughs> I was not expecting the medical fans to come in like so hot with those medical questions. Yeah, so they definitely gave us a run for our money. We had a good time. I'm still bitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Well, I was down between those last two, so I was 